It's 7.03 on uh, Monday, the 18th of September, and I'd like to call to order this meeting of the Waterbury Select Board. The first order of business is to approve the agenda. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. second. Mm -hmm. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Yes. I'm sorry. Yes? I needed to know if I could add, I'm sorry, I'm glad I remembered that one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Steinman. Oh, it came to me today. Uh, we have a new zoning administrator. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. And he is our 911 coordinator, or we'd like him to be. But we need a motion from the select board. The VTE 911 board requires a copy of the select board minutes or a letter. So okay. if we can add it to consent, um, I can use those minutes. All right. So it would be That's... to appoint Mike Bishop as the VTE 911, uh, or excuse me, E911 coordinator. E911 coordinator for the municipality of Waterbury. Yes. All right. Uh, do do I have a motion to accept the uh, amendment? To the so moved. Seconded. All right. Moved and seconded. All in favor of the amendment, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. The amendment is now in uh, under the consent agenda to have Mike Bishop, our new uh, uh, zoning administrator, to serve as our E911 coordinator for Waterbury. Uh, any further discussion on the agenda? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The uh, agenda is approved with the consent agenda items as amended. All right, now is the public uh, time for anyone to address any issue that is not on the warrant agenda. I would ask that you keep your comments to three minutes if possible, and if it requires further discussion, we'll bring it onto the agenda in the following meeting. Any comments from the public? Hearing none, we'll move forward. We have an entertainment permit uh, a request from Old Stagecoach Inn. Uh, the uh, permit, uh, entertainment permit request is in our packet. Uh, Krista, would you mind coming forward? Thank you, Lynn Aaron. We got consent as a motion, right? Right. I feel like we all got wrapped up together. Is, okay. is as in long as you feel good for the minutes. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure we had the agenda approval yeah. and consent. Thank okay. you. Uh, Krista, have a seat. Thanks. And please, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself and uh, state your business. Sure. My name is Krista Bowdish. I'm the owner of the Old Stage Coach Inn. Um, <coughs> and been talking with uh, one of the bluegrass groups that plays at Pro Pig frequently about having them, you know, play bluegrass one evening kind of intended site would be them on our porch with audience on our patio that's kind of in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. um, I put several dates on there just because I wasn't sure what date would work for everybody. And also if if we get them approved, I'll see if I can't find maybe Katrina's Celtic group or somebody else, a singer songwriter or something to just a few evenings uh, before it gets too cold um, as our first little attempt to have something fun um but 5 to 7 p.m so it's over before anybody's trying to go to bed mm -hmm. whether they be our guests or the neighbors or whatnot um you know and either if if it's the bluegrass group right now at pro pig they have a little pa with an eight inch speaker you know they're right next to the houses right there on elm street so it hasn't been an issue yet so similar setup with them and if i did get other groups again whether it's celtic or acoustic or whatnot it would either be truly acoustic or similar small footprint. We're not doing a big concert. It's just mm -hmm. something to kind of welcome people as they arrive in the evening or sit down with a cocktail on the patio, open to locals as well, just like our patio and pub is. Um, but yeah, so something small, not, we only see maybe 20, 25 out there anyway. Um, so wouldn't expect anything bigger than that. Um, and have you had uh, the opportunity to, to uh, discuss this with the uh, Wells House uh, Apartments uh, residents? With a couple of them. Um, I've got Tony's number, so I'll talk with him more generally, but there's there's a few that I see every day when I'm out walking the dog. 
Um, but I, you know, other than talking to Tony, I'm not sure how to get it to everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and again, that's part of the reason I also want it done by 7 p.m. so that, you know, there's no <laughs> nobody who's uh, who's trying to go to bed um, and still disturbed by it. Yeah, I'm like, will alcohol be served? And do you already have a permit to? We serve do. Out that's our li uh, part of our licensed area. Um, so yeah, just the local beers and, and whatnot that we already serve in our pub. Other questions from the board? Mm -hmm. All right. I think uh, we've, you've answered all our questions, uh, all, all two of them. Um, <laughs> and, uh, I'll <laughs> make a motion to approve the entertainment permit for Old Stage Coach and that's presented. Seconded. Okay, moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thanks, and, and I wish you were doing control. this when I was playing <laughs> shows. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Not that expedited <laughs> paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> it was almost right. that efficient. Oh. Oh. Can you step by tomorrow, Chris? Yes, and we'll settle up with the $25 and I'll grab a copy of you just Thank you. Awesome. Okay, uh, next item on the agenda is the zoning bylaw update. Because you all are so excited. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Um, Martha Statkiss, who is chair of the Planning Commission, sends her regrets because she is away <laughs> this evening. This will hopefully be more competent than the last time I tried to do this. <coughs> These are flyers for the upcoming walking or mic, maybe you could do a Thank drive you. along option. <laughs> um, open house on October 5th. Um, I will say, in general, I've been returning to planning commission meetings, um, the group with support from Neil um, on staff and also the work they're doing with the SE group um, is moving forward. Karen, I didn't preview this ahead of time, but oh, this, see, this is by, does anyone have the one with the little URL at the bottom? Mm -mm. Tom, I, also. I do from Neil and I also Yeah, I need the bit.ly, so Facebook. Karen can, uh, so yes. Yeah. Um, my original had the... No it's tiny URL slash water BT. I'll get it on my computer. Oh, I thought this was going to be the flawless tech one. Let's well, go um, QR. I don't know, but like, there's a URL so that I was going to ask if Karen could go to it on the screen just to show everyone, uh, which I did not prep with her ahead of time. And thus, you want me to just email it to her? Um, well, or text it? Computer. I can get it to you. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I don't have my email on this computer. Yeah, you're fine. It's it, they make it a short, so you're literally going to type in short URL slash Waterbury, and it's going to come up. Um, I just got to make sure I get the name right. Yeah, just uh, type short URL. <laughs> okay. Type okay. in. Where am I typing it? Okay, hold on one second. Uh, browser. Any browser. Open a web browser. Okay. <laughs> nice. Is it going to? Is this going to show? Yeah, this is great. Oil. Oil. So. Oil. www. Tinyurl.com. Okay. <coughs> Tiny slash Waterbury zoning update. Yeah. You're a rock star. Hey, look at that. Hey, look at that. Um, so then if you go back to the Zoom, so sorry, this was more intensive. Nope. My meeting, far left, it's there. There they are. And then the magic share screen green. Mm -hmm. And then. Oh. <laughs> you gotta find the right one. Yeah, that one looks right. I, that's all I see. Yes, that's, that's the one. That's the one. Yeah. And hit share. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyone get back over there? I know. Come on over there. Woohoo! <laughs> 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 we'll stop. Um, I can't come do this. I really feel so bad. But anyway, so folks can see if you click on, so sorry, phase one. Um, this is one just noting that this ultimately is going to be a long term process that it includes both. This is the portion between the Winooski River and 89, but also the group wanted that phase two information on there so that folks know, like, if you live out on Route 100 on the other side of 89, um, they will get there, but this is really this phase one. 
Um, we can keep scrolling down, mostly timeline, which is most important for us. And phase two is going to be addressed next year? Yep. Um, actually, you can try timeline It'll begin on the next far year. right yeah. 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 That's a yeah. So this is really what I wanted to just highlight tonight. So just to say, the Planning Commission imminently should have the release of the full draft for everyone. Um, as was noted, this October 5th date from 5 to 7.30 is a chance for the public, I would say, to more informally provide input. You'll see we have two Planning Commission public hearings, our hearings, um, moving into early 2024. But part of the goal of the walk-in tour is for folks to be able to come along, ask questions, you know, and particularly like property owners and residents maybe along this area who have questions about like, what does that mean? What would this look like in my neighborhood? Um, so this is really a great chance to be able to do that. There's going to be two of them um, for the different zoning districts, but this is the first one. Um, I'll be there. We'd love to see anyone who's interested. Um, but also this website, which we don't need to do a more in-depth analysis now, other than, as Tom just said, he put this on the town's Facebook. It's on the um, main municipal site, but folks can, this whole website gives additional updates about the goals of the rewrite, the different districts being covered, the types of uses. Um, so mostly, again, just for all of us to know, this is the proposed timeline. I know we've all talked about the interim bylaws and wanting to make sure you know, this has the goal of having those new bylaws ready to go in time. Um, and I think just in particular, being involved early helps so that when we're getting to those public hearings, we're all on the same page. Um, not everyone maybe reads zoning for fun. So I would say mine is this is the like friendly, like if you have something you're gonna disagree with, personally, I would love for us to like have those conversations now while we're having a walking tour in the neighborhood so that by the time we're getting to Planning Commission public hearings and our public hearings, it's something we all feel really, really good about supporting and ultimately adopting. That's all I have as my liaison um, soapbox, um, but I would say that like kudos to the Planning Commission again, who have been meeting uh, every week and working through all of this um, with Neil, and so excited to have some more user-friendly things to go through. Um, and even I definitely need to still spend some time really sitting down and just making sure that I go through things and kind of surface anything I want to ahead of this. Great. Uh, You're a star. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> well, thank you. Questions from the board? Sorry for the walking tour. All right. That's my calendar. Thank you, Alyssa. Uh, and I believe there's no action that needs to be taken by the select board on this, uh, as of all yet. But me, but. Uh, it looks like uh, in April, the next one. Oh. <laughs> Begin becoming informed now in anticipation of our future form. All right. Uh, any questions from Lisa or anyone else in the uh, Zoomosphere? No. Oh, good. All right. Let's move on. No. Uh, RW Art Club funding request. For the Stowe Street Alley. Um, Tom, do you want to give us a, an update on this? Sure. Karen was before you uh, some time ago, and the board, um, in essence, deferred the, the funding request. Um, she's nearing the construction phase of the project, so the, the funding request is more urgent for her. Um, Karen and I had some conversation and traded emails about the ability of the town to maybe eliminate the request or reduce it by uh, virtue of us doing some of the work. And her answer is that there's a couple of different owners. Um, she's got MOUs with them. Those MOUs are not with the town. It's pretty precise, you know, hand-laid brick work. It's not, not work that we can really do or have experience doing. Um, and we're also busy. We're behind on all our paving. We finally sort of caught up on some of that with the flood. So it's not it's not really work that falls into our wheelhouse. Maybe we can assist maybe with some of the hauling away of the debris and some, some costs like that. Um, but in general, it's not a good fit for the town to take over. Mm -hmm. And she's got a signed uh, contract with the uh, Ambler uh, Landscaping uh, to do the work. So that would sort of conflict with that as well. 
But just to go, I'll have to <coughs> abstain from voting because I am on the um, we're a revitalizing Waterbury um, Alley you know, fundraising committee. I'd, I'd be glad to answer any technical questions that I might be able to. Okay. Sure. And I'm here representing RW. Uh, would you mind stepping forward? <laughs> I will. Yeah, my birthday. Um, no, just that, I mean, the project is big. We've been working on it for two and a half years. We have been contracted to do the asphalt removal, the brick laying. We have a lighting design person. We've got, we've got everything pretty well lined up, hope to go mm -hmm. soon. We just need more funding. <coughs> It's over half funded already, so it's very, very likely this will happen. And um, when Karen presented last time, uh, after some discussion, uh, I brought up the fact that the funding for ARPA was really uh, designed initially uh, for uh, recovery from uh, the, the pandemic disaster. Uh, and I wanted to know uh, to what extent uh, this project really uh, would create some type of economic uh, impact and uh, uh, recovery uh, for uh, our downtown merchants. Uh, and I don't know, can you address that? Yeah, I mean, I've been um, on the RW design committee and have cleaned up that alley for years, mm -hmm. along with Jack Carter and other folks. Um, I always called it the ghetto alley. <laughs> um, it was pretty bad. And I think that the town deserves that. I think the retail shops deserve having a nice space for people to grab a bagel, sit in the alley, or um, I think it's just overall good for the economy of the town. And, and as bad as it looks now, I think it'll be a highlight for attracting people mm -hmm. to the town. Um, I'm, I really do. I mean, there are certain places in certain towns that you go in and it's a wow moment. Um, and I think, I think the alley will be that. Uh, another question is that uh, if I looked at the budget uh, correctly, uh, even with 20000 you don't have a, a complete, uh, you're not fully funded. Uh, and uh, so I'm wondering what this would allow you to do uh, and how you would tend to make up uh, any further budget needs. Right. Well, Mike can tell you. I mean, we have a fundraising committee together. We're targeting, you know, particular... Um, foundations, grants, um, individuals of the Waterbury community that would contribute to that. That is pretty much our plan. We also ho hope to have another uh, uh, crowdfunding. I mean, we've already raised at least half of the money, mm -hmm. which is pretty significant. But it's, it's, you know, when we first got into it, we were thinking, well, 90, 120. It's much bigger than than we could imagine between to, to really make something of it to make the gateway what we want it to be the lighting design is is pricey we, you know some of it's just the liability making sure it's a safe place um, to be well lit and also a place for artists for makers here for different people of the community to actually um, present show their craft share it with folks uh, yeah. um, are you waiting, will it be done in phases so that some of it can be done before um, it's fully funded or are you waiting until fully there's, funded? There's three control? phases. Okay. The first phase is take up all the asphalt, the weeds. We've already taken out a tree and some shrubs and some other things. Moved the propane tanks out, um, done a lot of work. So the first phase is basically getting it paved. The second phase is planting um, benches, <coughs> trash receptacles. The third phase will pretty much be more of the 
lighting, the other design features that will go into it. So it's fully, I think we, we hope to have it paved starting next week maybe, uh, the end of next week. That's the big piece of it to get it done. It'll clean it up, it'll look beautiful. I think it's gonna attract more um, people that would like to, um, you know, to help us fundraise for it. It'll just, it'll be black and white. <laughs> Oh, you know, within a few days. So if we don't have the money, we don't, we just won't get to, you know, phase three. Mm -hmm. Hey, um, I have, I guess, two questions. The first one is, there are other municipalities who have done projects similar to this one. Barry is a good example because they have several alleyways that have the archway and the, and the granite benches. Um, and I can't speak on the economic impact of their uh, alleyway projects, um, especially the one next to like AR Market and stuff like that. Um, my concern is that we're being asked to spend money from an account that doesn't replenish. Um, when we spend it, it's gone for maybe some economic positive economic impact. Um, and that is a little bit of a gamble, in my personal opinion. Elizabeth, you have your hand up? Well, I guess it's better. Uh, a question yeah. or a statement? Yeah, or yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, the question, the question <laughs> was, yeah, sorry. The question was, um, do you have any, um, like actual real um, fungible examples of projects like this having positive economic impacts on communities. I, I can't say that we have no statistics or results of like what happened in Barry. Right. Um, a number of, it's a collaboration of a number of people, the Rotary, Makersphere, I mean, senior citizen, it's a huge group of people that are working on it. A number of them are business owners um, who are feeling that that alley is an embarrassment to their institution, to their, Snow Street in, in Point is a good um, example. Um, that may be the answer if the local business owners were interested in funding it. it they right. Better than us. Right. Um, and I, I think, you know, Stowe Street is, is a special place, you know, when the garland's up and it's lit and it's looking great, and then you take a turn and go down that alley and go, huh? What's this about? Um, so I, I don't have any statistics to share with you. I think there's just an overall feeling in the community, um, going back to the days of Jack Carter, um, that this is a little bit of an embarrassment to Waterbury and that it needs to be cleaned up. It needs to become a happening place. And I think it will enhance the village, the, the tap. <coughs> and I think it will um, benefit. The one piece I'll add is the town will not own it right. when it's done. Um, we're, not even, we, we're not even clearing snow in the winter. We've agreed that it's essentially gonna be closed off just because clearing snow from the space is tough for us. So it's a it's a one-time expense, but it's in essence um, an improvement in perpetuity that doesn't necessarily obligate us to spend money on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I guess uh, just speaking for myself initially, uh, uh, I, shared some of Kane's concerns uh, about competing interest of this. Uh, there, there are, of course, a number of uh, flood recovery initiatives uh, that uh, we want to undertake uh, that uh, are going to have long-term impacts uh, that, that we can you know, document. Uh, and there's some question as to whether that might take priority over uh, something like this. On the other hand, 
this is a project that's been going on for a long time, uh, and I, I see that uh, the uh, the merchant community uh, of downtown Waterbury is really behind it and has sort of singled this out as a priority for economic development in town. So I'm, I'm leaning towards a positive outcome. I uh, yeah, I agree. I think um, we know even if it's anecdotally that a nicer, more welcoming space is going to draw people and keep people. I think we're the timing is really interesting to look at with the Phoenix opening. I've been seeing people in the alley. Uh, I went to an event and That's there was. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 That's the wrong side. I was like, who happened? But um, regardless, people are there outside. People are coming for events. That space is, is drawing people from other towns um, too. So I'm just like thinking about you know the impact of Stowe Street and those businesses there, which would be positive. We also know that. Public art is has really positive outcomes in towns, um, and I think it is a boon to our local businesses, which did suffer greatly in COVID. Um, I also want to remember that the ask is twenty thousand, but if we're unsure as a group about that number, we can partially fund the request too if that feels more amenable to everyone as a group. So um, that was kind of my thought then. So yeah, so I'm feeling positive about saying yes and also flexible <clears throat> on the amount. Uh, Mike, you can speak to the issue even though you've uh, stayed from voting if you want to. Well, I wouldn't be on the fundraising committee if I didn't think this was a very important project in town. I think it has economic vitality. I think this is unlike the Phoenix because there's just a little stuff. I think this is going to be a really nice space, which is going to draw people in, into town. Uh, it's already been highly supportive. We're just going the second round, the second half of rounds, we're going really after big dollar donors. We're not looking at the, you know, the dollar paper, <laughs> uh, the hundred dollar paper. Yeah, we're, we're not looking. I know I already have my hundred dollar paper in, but we're, you know, they're looking at now, you know, minimum of a $5,000 investment, you know, and, and ideally we'd rather, we'd like to have five $20,000 investments and we're going after institutions and individuals who can do that. And I, I think it's a, a very positive thing in town. I think it's, it's a place where I don't see the, the Phoenix area as a real sitting kind of, I think this is going to be, you know, if you, I wish I brought some of the uh, pro forma and stuff like that. It's going to be a very nice space. And <coughs> why we have a $200,000 budget versus. Would it be advantageous to you uh, for the town to put up matching funds? As in, we'll match uh, $20,000 if you can raise it. Oh, I don't think they would have a problem. So I know they're going to make get twenty thousand dollars. Absolutely. Yeah, that's an easy call. Eh? <laughs> if we have to get a hundred, you know, close to a hundred. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can you match that? No, just kidding. Oh, well, we could, but uh, that's not your <laughs> one. So no, 20, no, 20, no, 20, no, 20, no. The fundraising um, team feels very confident um, yeah. that this is something the community really will support financially. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we just don't want to be chasing after a lot of small donors. We want to get this done quickly by mm -hmm. big dollar donors, and we think this is going to be a marketing place for a downtown world. Alyssa? I apologize, Julie, because I know this is probably more of a Karen thing, but maybe can you just outline on the MOU? It's for public access, right? The, with the two property owners? Yes. Um, so once the improvements are completed, it's for public access. It is for public access. Is correct. Yeah. I guess just for me in terms of framing, like, yes, we're recognizing this isn't municipally owned, but it's creating public infrastructure and public access. So to me, um, you know, same thing. I think we all want to be responsible stewards. I think we're recognizing that this is investing in our community infrastructure in a different way than investing in bridges, which we did to the tune of over four hundred thousand dollars for really that like core municipal infrastructure, but to me, you know, I'm thinking back to our conversation with Rotary and the investments they put into Rusty Parker Park and what 
um, an asset that is for our community now. And I, you know, Tom put numbers to it of how much uh, investment from those community volunteers um, really made that possible. So to me, an ask that's in the budget of 10% of the overall project cost, which I'll admit is more than I thought it was going to cost too. But um, this is a way of us showing our public support for, again, what hopefully I think would be a community asset. Um, I think it, there's a way to match and leverage it further or just recognize that like this is the investment we're comfortable making, but if things are going to cost more, um, I think it's a real boom that RW and others are willing to do the behind the scenes fundraising to make that happen. So those are the reasons I will support it. For the discussion? I like your matching idea. Mm -hmm. We have a motion. Can I ask a question? Sure. Yeah. As like just a taxpayer. Why mm -hmm. why now are we after these big dollar donors? Like I had the friends of the Waterbury Library come to me today and ask me for a voter checklist for a campaign. I don't rem I don't remember getting a postcard about this project in my house asking me for money. <coughs> it's coming. <laughs> it's it's so right at, at the point we're just I'm not about. a big dollar. No, so. and, and, <laughs> and it's very targeted. <laughs> not after you. To, <laughs> Because we don't want to be after a hundred different donations. We want to try to get away with five or ten or fifteen big, big. Donations. But I think that's my question. Like, why aren't you after the small dollar donation? We have already done, done that via the brick campaign, a hundred dollar bricks. So they're already invested. People, small people, already invested. Like me, I know I missed the first round, and I was totally upset when they reopened it up. I was very happy, and I think that's. Part of the reason why they got the money is because there were a lot of people who invested in $100 bricks they wanted to be part of. I see. So we don't want to go after the same. Right. We don't want to kind of go after that same market again. Okay. The other piece I would add to Karen is RW, I think, does that for its general operating, not for this. So I guess I would just say, like, I know friends of the library do a lot of general things. And just from having worked at RW, I think some of that is just generally supporting membership in RW, which does a lot of projects, not just this one. Um, so that I think the goal of that is to be more town-wide too all the time. In other words, I don't want to target the same people. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we are at a thing three, three different times. Um, the brick, I'm sorry, the brick, we, we, we ran the brick supporting campaign three different times because people were like, wait a second, I didn't get to buy a brick. And I think we just felt like, you know, the people donating $100, we just didn't want to go after them Again, okay. it just it gets old after a while. Right. Yeah. But they probably wouldn't refuse your money if you want. Yeah, you want to make a kind of I'm sure they'll take it. We have a motion. Uh, Don't move. Don't move. Well, I move that we approve the RW the <coughs> Alley project request for $20,000 of ARPA funding. Um, encouraging the fundraising committee to leverage the funds um, by using it as a match or a challenge um, in your next in your next fundraising round. Second Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstention. Mm -hmm. Okay, congratulations. All right, thank you, thank you so thank much. You. All right, the next item is to set the dates for the international meeting regarding the <laughs> international. international. We're going to talk with Quebec. Yeah. 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 The international like meeting of Waterbury Town Charter. I was thinking I should stick around. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have a lot of questions here. Anything to do with All right, well, let's try this again. <laughs> Set dates for the informational meetings regarding the charter vote. And could uh, Tom, you or Karen remind us of what the proposed dates are? Go ahead. Um, in my last email, I proposed uh, uh, piggybacking Alyssa's desire to have one on a select board meeting night. We would have one on Monday, October 30th and then a second one on Monday, November 6th, which is an already scheduled select board night, the 6th. 
So cabbage night and then the sixth. And then sticking with the charter vote on December fifth. Yes, and that left the yeah. Well, I had to because that's your motion. So that's the day of the vote. And then um, December sixth is a. December fifth. Fifth. It's a Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. So it's going to be all day voting. Uh, I I intend to do it here. And the fifth would be strictly an Australian ballot vote. That's and there is no public meeting to be had. That's People correct. come to the municipal offices and vote between 7 and 7. Correct. And can vote early. Yes, that's correct. I yeah. remember that they don't have to be here and be available on that day to that's right. be a part of the vote. Yeah. And so then we would uh, open up uh, the meetings on October 30, and then again on the 6th, uh, starting with the uh, informational meeting. Yeah, the, the fact, the times were of, in, in question to me if you wanted to make your regular meeting, the informational meeting, have one in advance of. That's, mm -hmm. that's really. Because October 30th is not a select board meeting. That's correct. Right. October 30th is not a regular select board meeting. Are we going to wear costumes, though? Yes. Yeah. Oh, of course. Why not? Absolutely. So the 30th, the 6th, and when would be the vote? The vote will be on Tuesday, December 5th. And that's what we're going Um. I like the seven o'clock time frame because it gives people a chance to, assuming they're uh, maybe working and get out at five, a chance to uh, do what needs to be done and get themselves fed before getting here at seven o'clock. So I would think seven o'clock would be something that people are aware of and uh, would work. Mm -hmm. I agree. It doesn't interfere too much with our cabbage night uh, activities, I hope. Um, okay, uh, do we have a motion? I move to have a charter informational meetings on the 30th of October at 7 o'clock, November 6th at 7 o'clock, and a vote on the 5th of December for the charter. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, that is settled. Karen, you have a chat? Uh, yeah, it's, it's actually old. Lisa wants okay. me to send her a link. Mm -hmm. uh, Lisa, I got that. Okay. Uh, next on the agenda, we have a fire protection contract more with Moortown in Vermont. Um, can you give us a little bit more information on that? Yes. Uh, so the town has had an agreement with Moortown um, for many, many years. Um, dates back um, since, as, as, essentially as far as our records go, before the time of Bill Shepelik. Um, <laughs> it's never been written down. Uh, there's never been a formal MOU or a contract. Um, so I'm simply um, <coughs> taking the Duxbury version, modifying it for more town. Um, have they been paying us? They have been paying us. Without a contract. <coughs> there's been a select board meeting each year, and that's, that's it. And Gary Dillon has gone a few times. Um, it's for this, and I've got the area here, it's for that limited area of Moortown. Um, <coughs> Cobb Hill Road along Route 2 from the bridge uh, on the Winooski um, down to the former landfill. <coughs> there have been some conversation over the years about expanding it a bit, um, but Moortown hasn't been interested in that, I think because of the cost. Mm -hmm. Is it is this cost the the thirty five hundred twenty five dollars for the year? Yeah, it's a pretty limited area. Yeah. Is is that an <coughs> equitable payment based upon the number of residents served compared to the number of Waterbury residents served, or are they they get a better deal? Um, 
I think it's pretty equitable. It's not a lot of calls from this area. It's closer for us than them. Um, so I think it's a pretty fair agreement for both of us. I think the Duxbury one is a little bit more of a challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and what's the uh, inflationary addition? <coughs> Typically, just based on the CPI each year. The, um, at least that's the hope going forward. There was a long period when the contract amount didn't change. Right. So I just like to bump it up each year a little bit. Uh, be fair. Okay. And is this uh, this is just a one uh, one year contract? Just a one year contract. So we're going to be going back to them each year. I, I right. And the so, and the reason the Duxbury one I think is a little bit of a challenge is theirs is based on um, percent of their grant list. Our lister is their lister, so he went and did the data analysis, and he's got a listing of properties. Um, but the area of Duxbury to recover has not been growing as fast as Waterbury's grand list. And so the percentage naturally, you know, their numerator is flat and our denominator gets bigger. Mm -hmm. So it's not a, a so big we issue. <laughs> we don't gain, I think, yeah. quite as much as we should. Um, but in the, I went back, I think, a decade. And the last, you know, our grand list has, has grown double the rate of theirs. So it. it if we had gone and used that multiplier, our contract would be a few thousand dollars higher. It wouldn't be fifty thousand dollars higher. But nonetheless, it's something that I want to modify a bit going forward because you know you trend that out another decade and it gets bigger. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, when are we going to take a look at that, or is that been determined? Um, typically, that's December. Okay. But that that board is pretty conservative, and there's been some contract. There's been some issues getting a contract signed in the past. Mm. Sounds fun. How does the rest of Moortown pay for their fire? Uh, they have their own fire department. They have their own fire department. On the department. other side of the hill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just too far. It's easier to serve from Waterbury, <coughs> that section. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, this looks good. Yeah. And uh, good. the chief has uh, looked at it and approves? Yeah. Any other questions about this? I make a motion to approve the fire protection contact from April 1st, 2023 to March 31st, 2024, as presented. Seconded. Okay, moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The contract is approved from our standpoint. Do you, you want, want to take one and pass it Yeah, I'll yeah, start uh, by signing <coughs> this one. And thank you for saying that because I always forget. <laughs> As evidenced earlier. <laughs> I was hoping actually for the after action, if Danny, if you could just log into the Google Doc on that computer, mm -hmm. just because the comments don't print. Yeah, no, that's great. I also have plans like a PowerPoint and absolutely do not have the capacity for you that. You can so. swing it. Oh, this one? Okay. Mm -hmm. I will put it on the screen for Yeah, no, you're um, <laughs> just looking at the time. We're approximately uh, if I was, uh, eight eight five or maybe even eight minutes ahead of schedule. So if that's nothing wrong with that. It could take eight minutes for me to remember my phone. <laughs> yeah, good to get on this. If you can't remember that, can pull it right back. Right, well, Roger. <laughs> we love security. Sometimes. Yeah, I'm trying to uh, work out. Sure. There you go. I was going to ask. By way of informal banner, select banter is select word one words or two, and can we make a choice? This is a Tom conversation. It's inconsistent. All I know. The state of Vermont. I know. And I just want to answer. Select. It's actually in, in, inconsistent all over New England. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we're consistent. We can be consistent. You read it as one word. Select. I read it as one word. Select and word. I think BLCC does too. And BLC I favorite. I, I do too with my fans. I think, think, I think this one is a proper Okay, I'm okay. sorry. It wasn't too Well, should it technically be hyphen? Will we put this for a Parking lot, if I've ever seen one. Who's in charge? Who made up select board? Because there are other boards. We're just the select board. Are you select? Yes. Wait, school board is two words. We're not choice. We're not prime. We're on our select. Yes. Thank you all. But the prime board. Further research. How do I move down this for you? Is there a toolbar or something? Uh, just, I don't know. With your mouse? I don't know. Do, no, you do, do okay. you do Yeah, whatever you're doing now. Two fingers. All right. Scroll. Um, so, uh... Okay, uh, by the way, we have moved to the uh, after action report uh, that uh, Danny is going to present. I, um... So what we're going to do is I'm going to try to summarize a little bit of what is being shared on the screen, largely because it's a whole bunch of notes that um, still need some work in uh, synthesizing. Uh, it's a lot of folks' feedback. And um, so I'm sorry it's not visually super pleasing, but uh, just to give an idea of what's happening, we talked about a few different areas um, including preparedness, so not just the, the response, but what, how, in what ways were we prepared and how can we prepare better? Um, and so some things even right off the top is we're a little bit more aware of the supplies we might need. And so wanting to think about, in particular, we talk about a committee that might be formed, how can we think about a list of supplies, research what expires, what would stay good in, say, a decade, and then work with town staff to talk about where they might be able to safely be stored. Um, thinking about our uh, emergency management plan, it's for a large scale emergency, it's for multiple types of emergencies. And so something we've talked about is how do we um, consult with our you know, emergency response manager and look, use what already exists and then adapt something for a natural disaster, specifically a flood, so that we can not just say, oh, it's you know, once in a lifetime or once in a generation, but say this is likely going to happen again and it might look different but can we, how can we be organized and prepare with a flood-specific plan? Um, and so we've got a lot of information on things that went well and things that need improvement. A lot of the improvements started with contact when we're talking about preparedness, of thinking about who do we call and how do we activate communication among the town. So finding a really good phone tree, for lack of a better word, um, as well as utilizing the existing communications we have, such as the website, um, and then utilizing new forms of communication, like the Facebook for the town that Tom's got up and running, as well as working with Karen to talk about, do we set up um, like a newsletter mailing list, um, or a text chain, the way that schools have for emergencies or snow days, things like that. Um, so it'll take some exploring, and I think this is where that committee can be very helpful on what's, what's doable, what's affordable, and what's going to be efficient, and thinking about multiple ways to do it, um, and who's going to be responsible for doing those things when they come up. Um, and then similarly, some things that we had and can refine are um, the sign-up forms for both volunteers who want to help and people who need help. And again, I'm excited about a committee of people dedicated to this because they can use the feedback from the folks who used it um, and clean it up and get it ready. And then if we need to make some tweaks, if and when an emergency comes up, it's already there. We have the structure. Um, there's you know, a whole bunch um, of that, but. One thing I just want to add, um, you know, Danny, Alyssa, really quickly um, sort of developed a 211 system for Waterbury on the fly, and it, I thought it worked really well. And when we started getting 211 data, we didn't really learn anything new. Uh, it was mostly people who reported to both. Um, you know, I'm sure we all read the article about the 211 system and what worked and what didn't. Um, <clears throat> but I guess I would argue. 
everything I've seen from the state of Vermont and is that in the IT world, um, they seem to underinvest in my judgment. Um, you know, go back to Vermont Health Connect, and more recently look at the Department of Labor, and now look at 211. Um, <coughs> but I think this last flood, we controlled our own destiny by making our own system, and so I think we're better off building upon that, and maybe we'll be pleasantly surprised that the state will get a little more efficient at it. Um, but that's just my recommendation is I think we can control our own destiny here pretty well with some of the things Danny suggested. Thank you. And another piece of that preparedness, and it might not come, there might be some research and communication to be done before an, another event, but also having on our radar for when another event happens is getting in contact with someone at the state and asking what method they're using because we were getting kind of mixed messages about whether it's 211, whether it's um, some app that we didn't hear for three weeks later and then we're told it was really important. So trying to stay in touch with the, the state um, and as up to date as we can so that we can encourage folks, even if they come to us to get the help they need, what is the state going to require or what is FEMA going to require that they do? Um, can I yeah. just ask a question? What was the uh, state's plan uh, to, uh, you know, they, they told people to call 211. Mm -hmm. You call, I'm, my basement's flooded, I need help. What was their plan to deliver help or respond to that? <coughs> or what was it? <laughs> Speaking not as a state representative, I don't know that there was a plan. Yeah. I know one of the pieces of feedback that has been conveyed is that there was challenging messaging where folks were very strongly encouraged to report to 211. Right. My understanding is some of that is was to in order to be able to document adequate amounts of damage to hit necessary thresholds for counties and states. So I know there was a big call to one call to one one. The feedback we heard both imminently in our community and I would say candidly through broader discourse was that folks called and did not receive any help or certainly did not receive any help in a timely fashion, as was noted by the time that was distributed out. Um, it had been two weeks, which in a quickly evolving landscape meant that essentially we're starting from mm -hmm. close to zero because folks may have been different. But yeah. I think that would be a great question for us to ask as an yeah. official. I certainly can't answer on their behalf. And, 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 and to Tom's point, I mean, it does create sort of a bifurcated system. Uh, so people say, you know, I already called, I already asked for your help. They don't know that maybe they're talking to the town now versus the state. And, yeah. uh, there, there, were, there were three 211 emails that during the flood that were sent to me, Bill Woodruff and Gary Dillon, because we were on the emergency management plan, so we should one put more people on that mm -hmm. in the future. Um, the challenge was, because 211 was new, um, one of those emails was missed by all three of us because it was in the midst of everything. You get 100 emails a day, and no one called and said, hey, we're doing a 211 data dump, check your email. Mm -hmm. um, so <clears throat> I think the state's gonna get better, and I think the state's gonna learn from this, but I also think this is one of those cases where local control can, can serve us pretty well. And I think that messaging is the point. And if we know that 2 on one is for data collection, we can message that to our constituents and say, we are here to help you and respond to you. And the state needs to collect the data, so also call them. But maybe that's not your first priority. Your first priority is calling us and getting help. And then we'll remind you to call 2 on one and report what happened. So that's part of this, I think. Mm -hmm. Good. And could the reverse also happen? Uh, if you receive 30 calls in a day, could you take that data and just, just send it to the state and say, this is the I calls we got? I don't know the answer to that. Or, or I don't know if it needs to be a, a, a landowner or, I don't know. Alyssa? I just want to acknowledge that Liz Schlegel is here on the Zoom and uh -huh. was equally involved in all the imminent response and just wanted to give space in case she had anything to add and uh -huh. just to recognize her. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it, oh, you play is it, about the two-on-one -on -one stuff yeah okay so um just a couple things uh the big picture which we don't have to cover now and i imagine as folks you know as we all learn more about emergency response 
We'll get more involved with VOAD. I have attended a couple of their meetings. But Vermont VOAD is supposed to be the statewide organization that um, kind of leads best practice for disaster response. Every state has one. Vermont right now is pretty um, non-functioning. So the national VOAD, which is called Volunteer Organizations Active in Disaster, um, is putting in some people to help get Vermont stood up. It had kind of gone dormant after Irene, I guess. But the, the way I think the kind of disaster organizations look at this is the state VOAD agrees on a protocol. They work with state emergency management to communicate that protocol out through town level emergency ops people. As you've all pointed out, that didn't necessarily happen. But the protocol that I think people thought was happening is that the disaster response organizations use a software called Crisis Cleanup. They use it everywhere. It's standard practice for them. And they were using it. 211 was feeding into that software. So when people actually did make an ask for help, it did go somewhere. But the state, I, again, I've, I've, I've had probably a dozen conversations on this. I don't think the Emergency Operations Center knew that that was the plan. And so they didn't tell other folks. Um, but that data was going into this crisis cleanup app. Just the only people who knew about it were the national organizations like the Salvation Army, the Red Cross, um, Samaritan's Purse, all the big national orgs that were doing cleanup in almost every other town. So it was really kind of a combination of a lot of assumptions made by these big organizations that this is how everybody does it because it is how most other states do it. Um, and then, you know, the combination around the, the state decision to tell everyone to call 211 um, when 211 was not staffed or funded at the time. So, you know, like we could all point fingers in a lot of directions. I think for us, like Danny, you nailed it here. We have to have some kind of data collection, whether we're using the crisis cleanup app or something else. And the state has to tell the emergency operations folks what the plan is. Thanks, Liz. Uh, Mike, I agree with what a lot of you have said. I, I think the point of 211, and I don't necessarily agree with it, is for the designations for federal things. I think that's a real key thing because they want to see federal monies come into the different counties and they need those counts instead of 211 being an in-depth thing to help people. I think it really behooves us to have some sort of a local system like we sort of developed here. And, and it's not to say we shouldn't be encouraging people to also contact 211 because those numbers are really critical. So we do get funding from, you know, you know, DC. You know, Tom, I'm sure with a lot of, you know, you know, highway kind of projects, thing, you know, we didn't have so much road damage and infrastructure damage as other communities, but the communities that had, they really need that money and, and you, you need to, you know, get those numbers. But I think having an internal system, and I don't know, maybe if we develop an internal system, it could be a model for the state to multiply around the whole state of Vermont, other communities. You know, I think, but I think what we did was very exemplary, and I want to applaud Liz, Alyssa, and Danny for really doing a great job. Oh, not literal applause. Oh, team team effort. So yeah, many other a lot people. of people. Yeah, I know a lot of people. did all the you, things. You guys were the three <laughs> like the whole public works crew and fire department. Yeah. Never Thank you. Okay. Thank um, you. So there's more, and, and again, like I think some of this is important to maybe get into a little bit of the details now, but some of it, it may be more high level, and then the work will be ongoing as we as we 
move forward with preparation. So the next phase identified was early warning or like during the event. And I, I genuinely think that um, my personal feedback and others, but is that we underestimated what was coming. And I think that impacted the way that we started with communications, the way we like kind of got the ball rolling. And so some of the, some of the suggestions were like, can we research the accuracy of state flood forecasts? and be better prepared so that if it looks medium, we know it's going to be <coughs> higher than that. So that could or be the, some. The, that potential exists. Right, right, exactly. And so, you know, I'm from Florida, and we played that game for a long time of like a hurricane's coming. Do we pretend that we know it's going to turn because it's been turning every year for the past 10 years and not get prepared? Or do we get called over reactors because we're prepared and then it doesn't come? And I think the town of Waterbury would rather be prepared for a massive emergency and not have one that have one and not be prepared. So some of those things we can do in the meantime. And again, we talked last time about some of that emergency management training for the select board. And um, I, it seems we're all in agreement to move forward with that training so that we're better prepared um, as individuals. Talk a little bit about what early warning can look like with mass communication as we uh, talked about above and um, identifying some key both groups and individuals um, I'm just on like page yeah, two, two, yeah. Oh, you're on page two. Yeah, yeah. surprise. Um, mm -hmm. Like EFA, the select board, the primary school, um, Peter Plaggy, who helped with emergency shelter, uh, our state representatives. So thinking about folks to have already on that list to get in touch with to be prepared ahead of time. Um, uh, on the previous page, there was a question about or statement about put the bucket out for money for fundraising. Um, I was just wondering, because I was sort of under the impression that Peter agreed to have the Good Neighbor Fund actively involved with uh, helping people out on a financial basis if needed. Indeed. Good Neighbor Fund does, however, have a board that runs it with certain bylaws for what that fund can be used for. Mm -hmm. He's also kind of one guy running the show, and there's a limit on what, and he was literally physically housing people, feeding people, going to people's homes. Um, and then when we look at the model that we that has been now replicated from Irene, it's you know a larger group, a committee dedicated to this purpose, um, funding that with much less, much fewer restrictions and um, what it can do. And so it's it's just a better and more wide ranging model right. to be used. Um, where and both are needed. It's not an or. I think both are needed and and they're run in different ways and serve different purposes. So. Yeah. Um, Excellent. I'm going to, yeah, please just like either raise your hand or talk because there's a lot to go through and so I want to just kind of keep tracking. Um, early warning and during the flood was that sort of that next uh, period. Oh no, that's what we just talked about. I'm uh, moving on to next day action. So um, we saw the model of, of uh, early and often having meetings, um, including EFUD. Um, it worked really well to kind of go every day for a week and then reassess. So kind of having that model in mind as we move forward. Um, having, uh, I think, again, the committee having a response team sort of in place, um, hopefully ready to either come in and be available or help pass <coughs> the reins along so that it's not, you know, starting from scratch the way that we sort of did. Um, uh, where are we next day? And having that sort of um, model of like whatever it is, binder, notebook, Google Drive, um, that is hopefully going to be you know fleshed out with with the committee. Um, and then thinking about which like we did, have, luckily now we have this beautiful municipal building, setting up HQ, working with town staff to think about conflicts. Can we set up? How long? Where do we store stuff? Let's get the stuff out of storage, ready. Um, all that logistical. Um, and then going into the next week, second and third week, thinking about connecting to state leadership, um, you know, working with other municipalities. I think over the first few days, it was really crucial that we we're focusing on our, you know, geographic area. We now have a better map. We've got the grand list. We've got like really thinking about different areas that can be impacted, which we were cobbling together at the time. Um, but starting with our direct Waterbury constituents, and then when capacity is there, to start reaching out to some of our neighboring towns and districts who might not be getting the help they need, um, and then connecting with state leadership, um, and then moving into 
Oh, can I stop yeah, the reaching out into other mm -hmm. towns? I saw Tom's note <coughs> there about the MRU. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and I agree, but <coughs> I, I feel like two-way street is probably not the right way to put it because a lot of our neighboring towns don't have the resources that we do. And so maybe like a lend lease would be more a more yeah, accurate fair enough. Yeah, more accurate way yeah. to put that. I'm not saying I, I don't think we should do it. <coughs> um, I just feel like it should be a bit more formalized. I agree. For not just and, and, and not for their benefit. Right. Oh stream side engineering. That was that was my time. Yeah, I was making no, sorry. Uh -huh. Um Yeah, and not just um even if it's if it's it, I mean doing some outreach, sending some volunteers, but also just contacting the select board and saying, hey, here's the Google form we have. Do you want to make a copy? So you can have volunteers sign up. Or we even reaching out, you know, once we get a, a newsletter or a text chain and saying, like, that's very you interested in having this kind of thing. So what where there is capacity to do so. But um, yeah. one, and one thing that sort of struck me was that uh, Duxbury was particularly impacted because the whole section of their town got stranded because mm -hmm. uh, they were flooded uh, on both sides and the bridge was their only access to uh, the outside world, so to speak. Um, and and the, there was an issue with the uh, with Winooski Street. Um, <coughs> So I mean, I do feel like we are sort of tied to uh, to Duxbury, uh, particularly in a situation like this. And then there are some high level level issues as well. So thinking, Tom's had some some ideas about, you know, maybe some MOUs with other towns who have those um, the uh, vacuum trucks and getting together and saying, okay, if we have an emergency, we can borrow it, or if this town has an emergency, you know, just working together so that we're all not trying to, A, fight for resources, or B, scramble when the time comes, but we know who to call and that they'll be ready to help us um, when the time comes. Um, Gary was talk, or no, we wanted to talk to Gary about maybe purchasing some pumps, thinking about, again, what supplies, what equipment can we have um, to make ourselves ready, but what's, you know, worth the investment versus um, borrowing from other towns. Um, and then, yeah, again, con constantly talking about and working on mitigation for the future um, with lots of ideas and input. So I think that's sort of a large overview for those different segments of what a disaster looks like time-wise on a timeline. And the way that I've been thinking about it is um, when when a committee is, is standing up that's focusing on a volunteer uh, response to a flood or natural disaster, we can parse out what of this um, belongs in there, and then we'll then have distilled what's really a support <coughs> for town staff um, issue and can start knocking them off. I mean, I know you're already working on some of that stuff, um, but that'll be clearer to see so it won't maybe feel like as overwhelming of a chunk of, of work to do. And again, a lot of that was pretty high level, but I think that's kind of what maybe everybody wanted to hear. And then Liz and Alyssa, if you have more you feel like is important at this point. Thank you. Thanks. Um, Mike. One thing that's always daunted on me, I know there's a segment of our, of our population in Waterbury that are not electronically connected. Um, I think we did a good job reaching out to people, but I think there could be, we could have disasters that we're not gonna have any internet and cell service or whatnot. We really need to be planning for, for those contingencies. Thanks, Mike, that's a great point and something I did left out, left out, I did leave out, was door knockers. We had two rounds, yeah. um, first during, and then Liz led exactly. another round of door, door knockers door after. Door. So that was a part of it, and um, <coughs> Liz might be able to speak more if there's more to it, but I think we'll be more prepared next time around because of working off the grand list and, and getting that right. collection. Thanks for bringing that up. 
I found that and interesting actually because you you put together those numbers, the big numbers, and then people ask what the numbers were for. Like they oh, got yeah. a number. Like, I don't know why I got a number. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Uh, and Liz, you had mentioned uh, at some point uh, during that two-week period that uh, cell service was really poor, uh, particularly I think in the village in the center. Um, do you recollect what what the issue was, and do you have any ideas on that? Um, it happens in almost every disaster, right? I mean, I think we we definitely did a lot of research on this after Irene around. Um, the uh, what kind of coverage is here and whether there will ever be any more. And I think the answer is kind of no, right? But what happens is that circuits get overloaded. I mean, Mike's point is re is really on, on, on point for that around we will, no matter what, if people are directly affected, there's a lot of need to drive around and go talk to people directly. Mm -hmm. You know, but the, the I, I mean, we, I, I think, I know Danny covered it there, like we want to do better on data management. It is so hard to kind of take what's happening in the field with what we're getting with data, you know? And so that um, I'm really proud, you know, like I don't think without Karen and Woody, right? And and I just got to give a shout out to Kane who like put, you know, shoe leather on every single street. We would not have been able to say, we know right away the streets that were flooded the houses on that street that were flooded, right? That was because of local knowledge. But if you didn't have that kind of lived experience in your town, you know, like if people didn't know the town really well, um, you would have to just go door to door to door to find out, you know, that, that and, and that like, People now, they, you know, they're they're not very interested in talking to us. I definitely think we're going to have to do direct canvassing to find out <laughs> the status now. They don't want to answer the phone. But also, we had endless numbers of, like, calls dropped, people being up in the center or, you know, being out on Route 2, not being able to get calls through. It is just normal disaster stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. So back to Mike's point about there is going to be a day, you know, when we can't, when circuits are jammed or whatever. This is, this, I remember this, Gary has like a, uh, almost like a designation on his cell phone because of his emergency management mm -hmm. role. And so allegedly his phone gets More. priority service over uh -huh. all the rest of us low liars. <laughs> so maybe there's enough of those phones in Waterbury specifically with the emergency response being right here to give out, like, that, it, that it doesn't impact service. I mean, it's nothing I noticed, but I wasn't on my cell phone the way all of you were. Uh -huh. so. All right. I mean, cell service, depending on your carrier, is bad in Waterbury Center anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 If there's a disaster up there, nobody's going to know. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yes, Alyssa. I think I guess I would say the only other in terms of after action is just acknowledge a lot of what we've talked about here was the volunteer and stand up response. And I just do think it bears repeating as we are the select board and the legislative body. I know Tom is actively working on the FEMA reimbursement and kind of where the town stands financially and otherwise. But just to say, I think we're not there yet, but at some point we're going to want to look back and share with the community what we did and what it costs and what that means for them. As taxpayers, I think we recognize it was the right thing to do, and we supported doing it. And most of it, what is going to be reimbursable and be a non-issue. But I did just want to say that feels like a piece of after action that is different, and that I'm sure Tom will bring to us when the time is right. I do like to put it in a particular spot. What do you mean? Parking lot. We can put it in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's, it's the first thing. When I met with him, he said he was thinking about is I'm the manager and I'm thinking about the budget, so I have no doubt he will forget about it. But I just want to acknowledge, you know, for us and for the public that I think that is something just to say. Well, I, that you, I spent them. all of today, I probably spent 20 hours already just pulling together the numbers mm. and trying to get it into the right format for FEMA and getting all the backup. Um, as of today, I'm, I'm poking at 150 grand in costs. Mm. I don't know. You know, there's there's some of that that could be rejected. Um, you know, the rest would be reimbursed, presumably at seventy five percent. So it's pretty substantial dollars. Um, Sixty of that was the dumpsters. 
another 20 is dehumidifiers. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, what was the second thing you said? <coughs> and the second cheap. thing, that's cheap. That that was 60 for the dumpster. dumpsters, 20,000 <coughs> for the dehumidifiers. Thank you. Yeah. Are you, you going to try to get the uh, funding to pay back uh, the towns that uh, lent us the factory? Yes. <coughs> Do you know how much that was? Or, I mean, you may I haven't input that yet. Mm -hmm. I've been going through all our invoices, getting all the backup, filling out the forms you have to fill mm -hmm. out. Um, and we'll go from there. And how about the, just the uh, overtime uh, the state uh, the municipal workforce? That's all part of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for your yeah. investment of time on that. All right. Anything further to add? Any, any sort of things on the immediate to-do list? Uh, oh, I wanted to, still, I yeah, wanted to close out the... the Action report by thanking Danny for this because on whatever day one of the committee it is, I can just hold this up <laughs> and I'd be like, "No, oh, half your work's done for you. So <laughs> do the rest." Oh, what's But uh, just uh, on that, uh, is one of your uh, tasks to sort of develop a, a manual or guide? Yeah, it is on the list. Yep, a guide yeah. for whatever it happens. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then it's, you, we're supposed to differentiate between the emergency handbook and the natural disaster handbook. They would right. be two different handbooks. Yes. Um, I did want to ask if we have put out a call for people to join that committee yet. No, I need, I need some language, Kane, and, and Roger put the task on me, but I didn't find the time this week. I need some sort of... I can of, put something together for Yeah, you. I need some kind you. of quick objection, you know, um, object, Objective. This is our objective, yeah. thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so that I can put that on our website because obviously when I put up that call, people are going right. to email me questions. And <laughs> you want to put a job description. So, um, All right, yes, I will put a job description together for you. Yeah, something like that. If you go on our website, you look at like the housing task force, that's when almost right. every board has mm -hmm. a nice little blur on the page. Okay. Um, and, and that's on my, one of my sticky notes because we also had some of this coming from the Conservation Commission. Mm -hmm. So they've asked me to, to do that too. So I'll do those in tandem when we, when we get that ready. Okay. Yeah. And um, our next meeting will be October 2nd. Uh, we probably want to leave a little bit more time uh, for nominations, I would expect. Mm -hmm. um, maybe. When we get to uh, our uh, next meeting agenda, we can figure out when we want to close that, or, or if you can close it right now if you want to. Um, uh, it's one more time, Roger. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm just thinking about when we, yeah, you know, we're, we're going to get this out, and then we're going to say, please respond by a certain day so that we can evaluate uh, the responses and then right. figure out who, who gets the nod. I think oh, I can, a little quick by the second. Yeah, yeah it, that one's a little, so I would say second meeting of October would probably be the best. Yeah. 16th. Well, that might be, but that's the one Tom won't be at. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's actually a great night. That's, I, I yeah, would that's think, perfect. right? Unless you need Tom. Right. You mean a good time consuming task for that agenda? Yeah. Or maybe it will be really quick, but I'm anticipating so many I folks interested in volunteering that uh, it could take all night. Roger, yes. I, that brings up something that I continually mean to remember to bring up and forget and perhaps put in the parking lot or maybe meet with Tom later, but a process by which we nominate folks for committees is something I think we're lacking. We do it a little different for each committee and each task force and um, I would love a written procedure and I think um, you know we might be late on it uh, for now, but I'm, I, I nominate myself to make a draft to send around to folks and get your input, but I think in terms of equity and fairness, we kind of go by a whim. I mean, I think we put a lot of thought and heart into it, but we can't point to anything and say this is how we chose you and not you. Um, and I think that would go a long way for like just a little legitimacy and also for people to understand why they were put on boards or not. I was going to say to add to that, should it be committee by committee? Because, for example, a conservation committee, you want someone with 
experience, you know, with conservation or with, you know, nature or any number of things that you probably wouldn't share with the rec committee. Well, I was thinking less specific, like a job description and more process oriented, meaning, you know, provide, some people just say, I want to be on the committee. Gotcha. Right, so provide five to 10 sentences, whatever, two to six paragraphs, too much, on why you want to join the committee and what relevant experience you have. We request that you show up to the meeting unless you have, you know, an emergent or a prior obligation and then, you know, whatever, because I don't, which is not super consistent. Um, and I think if they're all semi formatted in the same way, um, and then maybe we think of some some points by which to judge, like prior experience, you know, whatever it, it might be. Yeah. So, um, Karen and then sure. uh, well, I just want to I just want to state that in my conversations with Carla, um, you all have been have the distinct privilege of having a lot of people ask to be on committees previously. Um, that wasn't the case, and I think they cool. shied away from applications because it just further pushed people yeah. away from volunteering. And it doesn't so even need to be a form. Line. Just yeah, points of like, yeah. here's what to include in your email, and we expect you to show up to the meeting. And yeah, I agree. It, it was, you know, I put it out there, and you're right. People, some people just wrote, "I'd like to be on the <laughs> committee," and other people send me biographies right. that were three pages long, and it was up to all of you to sort of vet it all out. So, I love. <coughs> Some bullet points, or but mm -hmm. but keep in mind that um, we don't want it to be so involved yeah. that it kind right. of don't make it so onerous that it's hard to get. All I would never. <coughs> all right. Uh, so um, since you self-appointed yourself, uh, <laughs> would you <laughs> care to uh, come back to us uh, yeah. on the second with uh, some uh, a draft on that? Sure. And I'll try to email it before then. <coughs> that sounds great. All right. Yes, Tom. So just a couple things, because I've had this conversation many times in the past. Um, it seems like the world sometimes goes in ways where you, you formalize it, and then 10 years goes by, and, you, and, and another board says, well, it's a little too formal. Maybe we should go back and make it easier. To the extent you formalize it, I just want to encourage you, the most important question to ask is, can you meet you know, the second Wednesday of every month, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Just the biggest one. Um, Do you in water? <laughs> one other piece I would suggest is that the select board now has committee liaisons, and so maybe you don't need to have people interview with the full select board. Maybe you could take the recommendation of the committee liaison mm -hmm. to streamline the process a bit. Okay. Especially if you've got situations where it's a, someone on the committee already just getting to report in. Mm -hmm. Reappointments. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. All right. Thank you for that. Any other further comments concerning uh, the uh, after action report? <coughs> there are none. Let's move forward. Road closure on Bidwell Lane on December 17, 2023. My understanding is that the uh, fourth. They have a forecast that reindeer are going to land in that area on that date. You know, this is one of my favorite things. This is, <laughs> I love it. Like, if there aren't hand-drawn maps at the select board committee, I'm a little sad. You know, the select board meeting, I'm a little sad. All right. Um, who, who wants to address this? Uh, more detail? Uh, can you have a map? I do have a map. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone has that. Everyone's got it? It's okay. scale. Everyone has oh, yes, I'm sorry. I do have a map. Yeah, it's one to one. Okay. It is nicely drawn to scale. Um, real live reindeers. Real live reindeers. And the road closing would be from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. on the 17th, which is a Sunday. And it's just to the, just to the it's park just park. in front of Stowe Street Cafe yeah. in, the, yeah. in the bookstore. Yeah, the bookstore and the cafe. Yeah, that's, that should be a non issue. A little mini parking lot there. Right. Um, so, uh, what do we, what's everyone's budget on this, Alyssa? 
Well, I was going to acknowledge that I'm friends with Katya and also young at heart, so have attended the past two years. Mm -hmm. There doesn't seem to be any traffic or otherwise input, so I'm happy to make a motion to approve the road closure for December 17th uh, as outlined. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? How many the reindeer? About the reindeer there was now. two, and they live up in the Northeast Kingdom, almost on the Canadian border. Oh, Vermont oh, Reindeer oh, yeah, farm. farm. They have an there, Instagram, yeah. which anyone can follow uh -huh. if you need Christmas cheer throughout the year. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. yeah, and you learn all about the antlers. They're like soft and velvety. Yeah, the velvety oh, during the summer. And the cold. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy it. They show up in a trailer. Uh -huh. It's um, really fun. Cool. Yeah, I want to go to this. And they have flying demonstrations too, or is that only? Uh, you, can, you should ask Roger. Is that a condition of our <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> flying demonstration? That and manure management. <laughs> that they did have a little bit. We don't need to close the road if they can fly away. Put a dash. Okay, we got off. We have a motion. It's been seconded. I think it's been discussed. <laughs> <laughs> Further discussion on this? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The deer, green deer will be <laughs> here and fly and protected <laughs> from traffic on the 17th of December. Okay. Emergency management training. <coughs> um, Tom, did you? Uh, Find those links uh, for the training. I did not, and neither did Gary Dillon. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. That being said, um, it appears that, and I wanted to ask Mike. Mike said he had done some online training. Was it was it a video you watched, or was it a Zoom, or people did the training via Zoom? A little, little both. It was a little higher. Uh, it was actually not too bad. It, it would probably be more effective in person. But I, don't, I don't know if they're even back <coughs> in person. You know, you know, sessions like that. The, it appears they are. They are. It'd be great if someone could come in and do a session here. Yeah. That would be my recommendation. How long does it take? So, well, go online. You know, they could probably tailor it to something that we need. Mm -hmm. The online thing is, it's long. It's four to six hours, I think. Oh. Uh, one shot? Yeah. I think you could take it in you could take it in different pieces, but it's too long. It's it's it, yeah. you have to dedicate a day to doing it. You know, that where they that was you know, well, where the they come, where they come in, I think they can they can streamline it to a more dedicated thing that would be good for select boards, and I think they could probably do it in a two to three hour session. Okay. That would be my take. Yeah. And if that's your pleasure, I can reach out and. Figure out scheduling. They yeah, usually are pretty good because I know when I took, you know, it was all during COVID where nothing was happening, but they would they also agree, they say people lose out by not having the in person, you know, effect. So if it's back, I would say, you know, it would be, you know, like it would be like having a select board meeting. Mm -hmm. And would the emergency uh, management director uh, join us for that? Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. I'm sure he's been through it. Sure. Didn't we do, we did one once. Yeah, okay. And then the following, <coughs> so we were supposed to have a second one. That so I don't know if it was a chief on the board? Well, no, so I don't know if this was a training. Under the Barb Farr yes. emergency management era, right. we did what I believe was termed a tabletop exercise oh. which a, with a wound from the state. And I just remember the premise of that was right. that a disaster had happened yeah. and Bob, Barb Farr was camping in the Northeast Kingdom with no cell service. Because, yes. of course, our immediate response was, oh, you just call Barb. And I think it was Barb and Bill were camping in the Northeast Kingdom, so you had. Karen and it was revitalizing water right at the time was invited to participate um, okay. for like the business side. So that's why I was there. Um, and I think yeah. the next one was supposed to be like role playing, which would be right. So that, I was going to say it wasn't with the state folks, but it was a <laughs> to do any role yeah. Yeah. hypothetical practice more than the like Sounds uh, very parts one on one. one. The regular so training is much more uh, dry. It's dry in some sense, but they have practical stuff that really brings it all to life. So mm -hmm. it's not. It, I have an interest in it, so maybe I have a little different per perspective. But I think 
all select board people should have some sense of emergency management training. It teases out the roles and responsibilities. Yes, exactly. exactly. That's, 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 that's the most important thing you get at. Because I kept on needling Gary. I said, why don't, why don't we have a more you know, in-person kind of like where we have all of our equipment and stuff like that. And he says, I just react to kind of things when they happen. And, you know, Gary's just a different sort. You know, he's good at what he does. He knows everything. What? He knows everything already, so he doesn't need us. Yeah. <laughs> but a lot of people, it, to me, emergencies, as we have seen, it's a sum of a lot of parts. You have to have a lot of people. And the more people, just as I said, if Barb Farr and Bill Sheplick are up in the Northeast Kingdom, you know, you have to figure, figure out, or, or Tom and, you know, Karen and something more somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gary would be away. Yeah, what happens if Gary's away? That's one of the reasons why, you know, because when I was dealing with all the stuff with my mom that I told Barb, I said, I don't feel comfortable being the emergency management director because I'm having all this stuff going. I could be out of town. Mm -hmm. If something happens, I just don't feel right about mm -hmm. it. And that's, mm -hmm. that's why I didn't become emergency <coughs> management director. Right. For those reasons and all the others, uh, if you wouldn't mind just finding out what the uh, options might be uh, for our core of a two-hour thing. <coughs> my, my, I guess my, my suggestion is we're going to hire someone to staff Kane's committee. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't say Kane's committee. <laughs> but you think of it as we all should talk about. <clears throat> yeah. We should probably wait to have that person mm -hmm. here. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. But nonetheless, I'll get it started and get some dates out there. Yeah. Okay. Make an informal motion that involves snacks and food. Yeah. At whatever yeah. time the planning <laughs> is. <laughs> Training is to occur. Segment. Morale. <laughs> Uh, Costco run. <laughs> what happened to all the snacks back there? Yeah. <laughs> That's how yeah, I kept them stealing here. I know they were gone, but there's a huge supply. Maybe so. okay, this is like bringing like oranges to soccer. I'm just saying, yeah. if we want to select board, bring snacks to me. We'll get a bunch of things. All right. Uh, I think that. Mm -hmm takes care of the emergency management training, and we're on to the ne meeting, next meeting agenda. International next meeting. <laughs> uh, do you have a copy of that? Yeah. Yeah, there's a couple here. Okay. People are missing. Oh, no, is this from your side? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my international copy? I do think I have a bunch of those. Well, I have a digital so, one. Do you want mine, Tom? Okay, that'll work. I'm happy. There we go. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Here's awesome. a whole stack of ones for tonight. It's <laughs> Leanne, Kane, and Danny. Oh, I can sign Oh, we can sign the thing. On the rear. Thank you, Roger. Sorry, Rich. No problem. OK, so what we've got uh, is a uh, fairly light uh, consent agenda as of yet, but that could fill up. And then uh, crew. This is the uh, RW's. Uh, version of the long-term recovery plan, post-flood uh, post recovery. Does anyone know anything more about this or <coughs> why it's on the agenda? Liz is still here, and she might be the best person if she's listening. Otherwise, I can fake it. Liz, are you still there? Is there a name? <laughs> I'll get a beer. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's Garth. No, it's it's Liz. Okay. It's Beth. What do you need? Do you want to um, give us a heads up about um, is crew coming to the next meeting that's on the agenda and who might be presenting? Yeah, it'll be Bill with me, but Bill wanted to be able to be there. Okay. How much time would you like? Um, about. Whatever you guys want to give up. <laughs> um, right now, you have uh, half an hour, 30 minutes. I mean, that's plenty. I, I, there's lots to talk about, but you know, we, and hopefully, we'll have done some stuff by then. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, we, you can move it down to 20 if you need to. Or you can leave mm. it there. Okay, well, we'll leave it there for the time being. I don't see a lot of pressure on the, on the schedule as of yet. But, cool. okay. All right. It's going to make a respectful so shovel like inflator joke. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we forgot. We <laughs> forgot about the shovel. So, minutes. I thought we keep 30. 30. Yeah. 20 about 30. Next. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.
wanted a vice chair in the distress. Okay. <laughs> and we want it in share. Yes, Understood. Sure. We can put Thank maybe you. 10 minutes yeah, for 20 the 20 committee minutes. application process if we want to do that. It shouldn't take long. <laughs> okay. Um, that can probably go towards the end. Mm -hmm. if, uh, we, there are other guests coming. Okay. Ten minutes for the committee application process. Danny presenting. Um, and road salt use. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll no, go ahead. This is a different. Topic. We'll be ready on road salt. Ready on road salt, and you've got uh, right now. You've got a lot of time. Yeah, I, I you think forty-five I just, yeah. minutes. <laughs> I think we need forty-five minutes, but I. Chris is here. I was going to say, but I held myself back. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> but but I do think um, it's not the easiest conversation necessarily. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Mm, so twenty. Play this. Okay. Now all of a um, It was partially a question, Tom, or a conversation around if there was anything around the charter. I know we are not at this point into the public meeting thing, but I know we have talked on and off about the policy for local option tax spending, which is not explicitly in the charter, but might be asked about. Do we need to do additional deliberation as a board or with consultation? Yep. So you had a draft policy. I presented right. it a while back. Um, I can. Refine, I'll resend that. We can refine that over the next few weeks, and if the board should form, should at some point, before the legislature has the charter at least formally adopted. Right. That was why I feel like maybe at least we revisit. I mean, or our absolutely. Board. I'm okay. totally with you on that. I think uh, the more clarity that uh, the select board can have on our intentions on how this money can be spent, uh, the better off we're going to be in all of these meetings. Also, if you're not here the 16th, at least we start it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's put it on there. How long? Uh, 15 minutes? Sure. Uh, Mike. This is a little bit, I don't know if it's another parking lot issue or uh, if it's something we want to at least discuss. I know there, there are various times that have come where like, the select board people we have had these erroneous scam emails and stuff sent sent to us. We've all gotten those. I remember this is early, probably, I don't know if it was pre-COVID or it's early in COVID. I had discussions with the uh, Attorney General's office. And they said, especially because now there's coming where there's a ton of, especially senior citizen scams that are showing up, flood-related scams that are coming up. You know, the Attorney General's well, office. Some of us hit all those boxes. So. Right, exactly. But <laughs> the Attorney General's office can pro can provide a speaker to come. You know, I don't know if it's for a select board meeting, but say outside of a select board meeting, have like, you know, a, you know a, just an informational meeting on scams by the Attorney General's office. I think that it's very timely now, you know, with the flooding and just, well, if you listen to the news, all these grandmother scams are starting up again now, too. So I think it's just, it just timely. I don't know if we have to discuss it at a select board meeting or if we just want to go ahead and do it. Yeah. Yeah, in front porch forum, there's a guy, I think his name is Bill April. He posts about a scam like every oh, four days. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think he might be AARP, I'm trying to remember, but he does it a lot. Yeah, I was yeah. wondering about the senior the center, people. like who else? Because if he did mm -hmm. workshops or something like that, because I think, like you said, maybe a community But the thing. Attorney General, I think, having to steal, because there are a lot of senior citizens that are just asleep at the switch. You know, I know my, my mother-in-law almost got scammed out of $5,000. Or some are really good at this point. Oh, like, yeah. I'm a digital native. I grew up with email, and I think some can be convincing. I think we get more of some of which are less convincing because our emails are publicly available, but that's separate. They're, they're smart, but I think it would be a good public service to have something. You know, this is not a select board meeting, but yeah. just to have this as a resource for community members. Uh, I'd be so glad would you to, like to uh, take that on? Yeah, uh, I'd be glad to contact them. We'll find out. Uh, they, they, they said they would, they would be glad to do something, but I think it was early in COVID, and I said, you know, at that point, we had a lot more things to deal with. Who? Library. Library. Yeah, library. Yeah. 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 Library. Library. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, yep. Community outreach, too. 
I'm going to say we even have any updates okay. for that housing. Anything else for the agenda for um, October 2nd at this point? We can certainly add things as they come up. But, uh, do we want to take a look at the uh, famous uh, PL and uh, see if there's any? PL. <laughs> cameras. What's the camera? Oh, the cameras. Oh, um, Lieutenant Lynn. Yeah. I'm not ready for that. And the loitering ordinance was. Yeah, how come you, you said cameras for surveillance? You were talking like $10,000. <coughs> I know what trail cams cost, <laughs> and I know you could probably get a pretty damn good one for, for $500. Yeah, but you have to go up to your trail <coughs> and pop the SD card out. No, you can do cellular. No, I'm kidding. If you're going to have a camera for security, it's got to be continuously recording to be of value. So it's not just the camera, it's the data storage that's right. expensive. Well, that's, that's kind of what I thought. And then one of the real challenges with cameras is if you're surveilling, a, right. surveilling is not the right word. I mean, if you're recording a public place, parking lot, whatever, um, things happen in public places that are not illegal, but nonetheless, someone's going to want the footage. There's going to be fender benders. Someone's going to call the town hall and say, hey, I got an accident. I'd like the footage. Um, someone's going to have to retrieve it. It's, it's the time to manage it all, too. That's yeah. it's a bit of an issue. Yeah, I, I actually been thinking a um, fair bit about that meeting that we had uh, with Lieutenant White, uh, Shock, um, and I, I sort of, after some thought, came back with a different conclusion rather than being like passing an ordinance <coughs> against loitering or uh, public uh, cameras. Uh, it was more about. Uh, the restorative justice, which was mentioned briefly during the, uh, that meeting. Um, but it sounded like maybe he needed uh, more orientation towards it and we needed to know whether there's a, a, actually any restorative justice service that we can access. Uh, because I think a lot of it really has to deal with, you know, he, his point was that we have juveniles out late at night and maybe up to no good. Mm -hmm. And having one of those 17 year olds who was undoubtedly one of the people he was talking about, uh, at least last year now, was at college. But um, I, I get the point, but I think how we deal with it uh, is something that we might want to consider before going forward with any of this. And, and I think restorative justice is a good model for us to, to consider because it really is about helping juveniles understand what the impact of their actions are, how it affects the community. There are victims to crimes, there are real people, and there's a process that you can go through to help people come to a new realization about how their actions impact the world. Um, and, and I think we'd be better served taking that approach than the sort of observation or giving them teeth to arrest kids. Uh, that, that's my personal stand, stand on this. So, uh, yeah. Don't you have to be arrested to be part of the restorative justice you don't. program? You, oh. can be, you can be referred by the police without an arrest. Okay. Uh, I didn't spend a lot of time in restorative justice. <laughs> so thank you for clarifying that. Yeah, there's not <laughs> someone who did. <laughs> Schools use it for truancy too. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. That yeah. opens okay. up a whole lot. Um, I've been thinking about this since that meeting a lot too. Um, and then I tied it in with ordinance enforcement, which we obviously don't have, right? Um, and I kept landing on the conclusion of a constable over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And I even went as far as to like look into salaries of constables in Vermont. They're not that expensive, um, and combined with our, our with <clears throat> the current police presence, we can we can now in, you know enforce our municipal ordinances. We have another pair of eyes. They don't necessarily need to be armed. There's nothing in the rule book that says they have a gun, you know. So they can give out speeding tickets. They can take it for ordinances. They can stop 17 year olds from skateboarding. Mm -hmm. on private property, whatever, but they're not necessarily 
you know, it's kind of riding the line. You know, mm -hmm. they're not another cop, right? They're, it's a different position entirely. But it still, it wraps a whole lot of issues that I think we're having right now into one nice little package with a bow, this, like, this solution. Mm -hmm. Alyssa. I just want to acknowledge in the spirit of, I think these are all really important conversations. I'll say like personally, I agree with a lot of what you just said, Roger. I'm wondering about for like the 16th, if we try and get someone from one of the local restorative justice practices that would have you here. I know Tom won't be here, but it occurs to me, a guest speaker could be something we could watch yeah, after the fact. Another, another director of the Montpelier Center. So I'm wondering if we County. could invite them to come to a meeting and share, or if there's a community that's using a constable that um, mm -hmm. could serve as a model, but just that, you know, in the same spirit mm -hmm. of that previous visit we had, that we would be gathering additional information about what services <coughs> they offer, how we might engage them, again, to kind of you know, maybe building out the parking lot with a list of more ideas, but then maybe being able to more comprehensively make choices as a board around what package of, of things we think would be the best for the community. Okay. Thank you. Katie, I agree with a lot what you said, but the cost of a constable uh, and the salary is just a small piece of what the co true cost of a constable would be. It's the training, it's the facilities that they're gonna need to house themselves, et cetera, et cetera. So it's not just, you know, you look up what constables are paid or around the state. That's, I think, one of the big reasons why we ended the Waterbury Police Department, because a you know, three, four person police department was just very un uneconomical. And, you know, it's either, you know, people wanna pay for those services via their taxes, which they all complain about, or, you know, do what we, I think what we did was a smart thing, is have the uh, state police, maybe we need more, to pay the state police a little bit more for some better coverage. I don't know what the, I don't know if we could just have like a town enforcement officer, I don't know, that's like right. a Most lower sure. level than a, con a constable is a lot, I think a higher level. Um, one other piece on this is that uh, Lieutenant White uh, indicated that uh, Officer uh, May uh, is joining us this week. You saw her in Woodbury Center already? Uh -huh. I saw a female state police officer in Woodbury Center, so I assume that was it. Good choice. Chance to be here. Um, and Tom, you were talking about. Uh, Trading some time around and uh, going out on a <coughs> yeah, if they'll have, they'll have me. Ride alongs are always good. Hmm? Ride alongs are always good. If they'll mm -hmm. have me. But not the state police have strict rules about that. Murdoch. That's yeah, May Murdoch. Uh, so, do you know if that's uh, uh, feasible? Or it's on my list to check. But. Okay. All right. Because I think that also could help inform this discussion. Right. What's her attitude about this? What does she think uh, uh, she can do uh, about this issue? What's her approach, that type of thing? And, uh, you know, we'd certainly welcome her here, uh, but uh, you'll probably get a lot more information if you do a ride along with her. And then the other piece is, um, when I read our contract with the state, um, we don't have any authority to necessarily assign tasks or priorities. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I make requests all the time, and they're pretty darn good about mm -hmm. about trying to honor them. Um, but a real goal of mine in the contract is to somehow make it a little bit more local. It might be nibbling on the edges in very small ways, but it'd be nice to try. Mm -hmm. Are you responsible for her patrolling right outside my street? Uh, <laughs> personal I told her. So I, I get to speak. No, over. don't speed on Maple Street, folks. Um, okay, so we have uh, a request for uh, someone from Restorative Justice to come on the 16th. That's what I wrote. And um, you might be able to give us an update uh, on the second. Tom, um, uh, how should we turn it? Um, public safety? He's distracted, so I don't know if he knows what you're asking him. Yeah. Sending me a Well, is this not going to be a lie? He may or may not have heard it. Okay, that's what I was listening, I was putting a note about the restorative justice contact. 
Okay. Maybe so you'll firm that up with Tom in advance of the meeting, Roger. So that's what I always do. <laughs> All right. I think we've spent enough time in the parking lot. Um, I want to get the rest of the okay, lawyer. Right. One more suggestion. <coughs> so since I'll be out the 16th, yeah. I suggest that's a good meeting to talk about the future of town meeting which was a discussion item at town meeting day, but it hasn't come up in a while. Oh, okay. Because you're not here? You don't need me for that conversation at all. <laughs> we can hash it out and get his input after we scratch each other, so. I don't know. Wow. Uh, I, I stopped there with that guy out. scratching the sniff. Sugar. Scratch and sniff. That's all good. Anyway. The first international right. select board scratches. <laughs> so that's for the 16th okay. as well. Okay. All right. I think we may have run out of things to talk about. I believe. Motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> all right. All there's that. All right. Aye. Aye. Aye.